Psalm 50, 15 says, Call on me when you are in trouble, and I will rescue you, and you will give me glory. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Are you tired? Are you worn out? Burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me, and you'll recover your life. James 5, 15. The prayer of faith will save the sick person, and the Lord will restore him to health. God will rescue, recover, and restore. Hello, my name is Jamie and welcome to the Faith Alive Show. On today's episode, Pastor Brent is going to be talking about faith. You might be thinking, well, what is faith? Can my faith affect God's hand? Or do I need faith to live out this life? In Hebrews 11 verse 1, it says, Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. On today's show, Pastor Brent is going to answer these questions and he's going to talk about the very first person who ever operated in faith. So stay tuned and have the Word of God bring life to you. Faith moves the hand of God. In fact, I'll even say this, need does not move God. Even though he's moved by your need, need does not move God. You guys get that? It's hard for us to hear that, isn't it? If need moved God, how many of you think he would have done something in all the third world countries that are out there right now? In fact, Canada wouldn't even be on his list, would it? He wouldn't even look at us. He'd be like, you guys got lots. You got lots of good stuff. I got to go to these other countries because they're really needy. But need does not move God. He's moved by our need, but it, doesn't, it does not do anything. Faith pulls God. How many of you think it's important to have faith? So when I read this, I wrote here that Abel's offering had all the ingredients of future offerings done in the book of Leviticus. It was the firstborn of the flock, and it was the fat. And how many of you know that later on God said, all the firstborn are mine, and on every offering I get the fat. God likes to burn fat. How many of you like to burn fat? On the treadmill or something like that. Well, you know what? You're like God. You're kind of like God. You like to burn the fat, right? Some people like to chew the fat, but God likes to burn it. Both belong to God. Say both. And uh, so Abel did something by faith. He came and offered it by faith. And Cain came and just presented fruits and vegetables. By the way, there's nothing wrong with fruits and vegetables. That was not the problem. <laughs> uh, but when Cain was not accepted, he became furious. You know what? I'll tell you something. It said, by faith, Abel, right? So that tells me that faith didn't, I mean, Abel just didn't come and accidentally, you know, please God. He didn't, you know, it wasn't like he decided to be a sheep herder. Cain became a tiller of the ground. And because God liked sheep better, he was accepted. You know what? He made sheep, so he brought sheep. Cain grew tomatoes, so he brought tomatoes. And God said, like my grandson said to me today, I don't like tomatoes. <laughs> but that's not what it's about. God had no problem with tomatoes. But if faith, if Abel did this by faith, and faith only comes by what? Then don't you think it's obvious that Abel heard something? I think we have this idea that Abel stumbled his way into this offering, stumbled his way into a, you know, pleasing God. But I don't believe that at all. I believe that he heard something, and I don't know whether he heard it from Adam and Eve after God killed animals and made coats of skin to clothe them, or perhaps there was already offerings going on. It's quite possible that this was the very first time that Cain and Abel offered something. And it's also possible that they had offered it many, many times. We don't know because it doesn't say. So we, we have to surmise a few things, you know. But we need to understand something that I think that God's can only, God can only be approached a certain way. Right? Today, how do we approach God? How do we get close to God initially? Faith in what? Yeah, faith in what Jesus has done, right? 
by the blood of Jesus. We have faith in that. That brings us close to God. That's, that does everything, right? Okay, back then, in the Levitical system, you had to offer up certain sacrifices, right? And there was a whole bunch. And it, that, now, if that happened first, don't you think it was still going on before all that, right? So God says, the only way you can come to me is through a sacrifice. And you have to do it by faith, too, by the way. So I don't think this was an accident. If it was an accident, then it couldn't have been by faith, right? So it wasn't an accident. He didn't stumble into this. He did it on purpose. You know, I, I say that he didn't approve Abel's offering because he likes sheep better than the fruit of the ground. God accepted Abel because he did something right. It takes faith to live this life. Shalom and welcome to Messianic Moment. Many of us are so familiar with the story of Cain and Abel that we would hardly give it a second thought. We read that Adam and Eve fall in sin, and a little while later they have two sons. First family begins. But then we see that sin finds entrance, it's like a seed in Cain's heart that's watered by the envy he has towards his brother for his acceptance before God, and that bears the fruit of murder. It's really a tragedy what happens, but what can you and I learn from the story of Abel and Cain? Well, some of the details are a little vague, but what we do clearly see is that both of them tried to bring an offering before God. One was accepted while the other was rejected. Now, though Cain was rejected, God did encourage him and say, if you do well, you too will be accepted. This story illustrates an unpopular truth that there is a right and a wrong way to come to God. There are things that God accepts and there are things that God rejects. The psalmist knew this and he cries out saying, Lord, who can go up to your holy hill? He recognized that this wasn't something to be done casually. If he was to come before God, he says, I must have clean hands and a pure heart. Now, the book of Hebrews testifies of Abel, saying that his offering was motivated by faith. Then he writes that without faith it's impossible to please God, and he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You and I can get caught up in the details of what worship should look like. We might even say, oh, Cain should have taken a lamb, just like Abel had done. The funny thing is that the Hebrew word used here, mincha, is the exact same word for a grain offering that was acceptable and written about in great detail in Leviticus chapter 2. So that wasn't the issue. This was a heart issue. You see, if Cain's heart didn't change, I don't think it would matter what sort of offering he brought. Because if he didn't have faith, if he wasn't motivated by trust that God was the one who would reward him for his sincere sacrifice, it didn't really matter. I think that's maybe why we don't get all the details. It's not about the details. It's about the heart. And faith is a heart issue. You see, faith responds to God in trust and obedience. Faith doesn't rely on personal preferences and opinions. It worships God in the way that his word prescribes to us because he is our rewarder. So why don't you and I come to God faithfully seeking him and trusting that if we worship in the way that pleases him, we will be rewarded. Shalom and thank you for joining us. Let's go back to the sermon. In Jude 11 says, Woe to them, for they have traveled in the way of Cain. In other words, in the way of lawless men. They have traveled in the way of lawless men. And I believe that what he's really talking about in Jude, when you look at it, is that they ignored God's commands and they tried to get to God in some other way. And I think that's what Cain was doing. Because I believe he knew what to do, but he didn't do it. But he tried to come to God in his own righteousness. Actually, he was, the, he was the first false religion, wasn't he? He went about trying to establish his own righteousness and didn't realize there's only one way to do it. 
It's the same today, isn't it? There are lots of religions out there, lots of people talking, lots of things going on, lots of people who are disregarding this way, right? Who is the only way to heaven, right? Jesus is the only way. Acts 4.12 says, There is none other name under heaven whereby one must be saved. There is no other name under heaven. There is none. Salvation is only in His name alone. Yet there's lots of people that don't want to do it this way because this way tells us to live righteously, live morally, and to give our lives to a God who has control over us. And people don't like that. And Cain, I don't think he liked that either. So he tried to come to God in his own way. And God did not accept him, did he? So we need to understand here that people travel in the way of Cain. There's lots of them today. And I don't think we should travel in the way of Cain. So faith is all about doing God's, doing this his way. You know, there's a lot of people today, even in church, Christian people, who struggle doing it God's way. I've, I've met lots of people who don't, they don't want to worship God. They don't want to be part of the called out ones. They don't want to give their lives to God and let him have control. They don't want to tithe. They don't want to give their money. You guys hear me today? They don't want to do the everyday stuff that God says to do in the Bible. They don't want to forgive. Are you guys hearing me today? There's a lot of people that don't want to do what, the God, what God says. It's almost like they think, well, this is boring. This is no good. I'll tell you what, it takes faith to live this life. A lot of people don't live this life because they don't have any faith anymore. They look for something ex wonderful, extravagant, and supernatural and awesome all the time. They forgot that you have to live this life out every day by faith. You started out in faith when you got saved. You don't stop living by faith today. You live by faith every single day. The just shall live by faith. How many of you are the just? Put your hand up if you're the just. How many of you are righteous today? A couple of hands. It was almost like, like, you know, like it was like, like hands down, you know, that game kind of hands up and down. And people aren't sure, you know. It's funny how that is. But I wrote here, Cain's offering, while being perfectly acceptable in his own eyes, was not according to God's eyes or God's ways. And Cain's heart was already messed up. You say, how do I know? Well, I'm going to read uh, 1 John 3.12. Don't have to turn there. It says, unlike Cain, there's another example here, another thing of Cain. Unlike Cain, who was of the evil one and murdered his brother. Say he was of the evil one. So what was the evil one like? What was Satan like? What did he do? I mean, this is pretty much fresh off Satan's rebellion, isn't it? So Satan's, he's already affected mom and dad. Now he's after the son. And, and, you know, and what do you think the devil's doing? I mean, he's doing his own thing, isn't he? And he's trying to get everyone else to do their own thing too. He says, you don't need to listen to God. You don't need to do it his way. He's already. Cain was of the evil one. Don't feel sorry for Cain, by the way. God kicked him out. and I don't know what his end is, but don't feel sorry for him. He knew better. If he didn't know better, God wouldn't have kicked him out. <laughs> God is not a harsh taskmaster. What we need is pulled into this earthly realm by faith. Welcome to The Right Choice. On today's episode, you will be given multiple answers to the questions I ask. What will be The Right Choice? Are you guys ready to play? All right, here we go. Question number one. When you come to church to meet with God, do you show up for the sermon only? Do you stop for your favorite latte and show up late? Or do you come early ready to meet with God? Okay, question number two. What do you do when the pastor has an altar call? Do you pack up your stuff and leave? Do you sit down and go on Facebook? Or do you intercede for those getting prayer? Okay, last but not least, question number three. In your prayer time with God at home, do you have the hockey game on TV, but you push the mute button? Do you read the Bible at bedtime because it puts you to sleep? 
Or do you set aside time and turn off all distractions like your phone, TV, and social media? All right, folks, that's all we have for today's episode, and we'll see you next time on The Right Choice. Let's go back to the sermon. So 11, Hebrews 11, 4 says, let's go to Hebrews 11. I'm just about done. By faith, Abel. Say, by faith. It's a great scripture. I, lo I love this guy. He's the first man of faith. We have to look at Abel. He's awesome. He was killed for it. He's the first martyr. Hmm. By faith, Abel offered to God. Say offered. So he came. Faith does something, doesn't it? It offers. Even when you come to church tonight. You come, you may not feel like it, but you offer to God something. Why? Because you know who he is. You know what pleases him. And you know what? God will change your countenance. I can't tell you how many times I've come in here and I haven't felt like doing anything. I'm tired or weak or, you know, whatever. And you start worshiping and you do it with all your heart and you do it with faith. And you don't know God's coming. Next thing you know, you leave differently, don't you? See, God does something. Faith does something. Faith pulls into this earthly realm what we need. Even if it's as simple as strength or life or joy or the power of God to live this thing out. Amen? I love that. It says... Uh, he offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain. So they both had opportunity to bring the sacrifice and do it right, but Abel did it better. <laughs> I think some people worship better than others too. I think other, some people give their money better. I think people give their time better. I think people give their energy better. You know, you can give all those things and still not be approved by God. You can go through the motions of Christianity and not be approved by God. Oh, you could be initially proved because of the Savior, but it doesn't mean you're approved today. I want to be approved every day because I believe faith approves, brings approval to God for you every single day because faith pleases God. How many of you want to please God? See, even if I say that, your human reasoning is going funny. Faith pleases God. If you don't have faith, then you're not what? Oh. There are some people that believe that we are always pleasing to God now, no matter what we do. And I can't find that in the Bible at all. I can't find that anywhere. Um, let's keep reading. By this he was approved as a righteous man. So this offering that he brought, God approved him as a righteous man. So God, I think, forgave his sin. What do you guys think? He brought it. I'm not even sure he knew that what, that's what it was. Maybe he did. He probably did. But if he didn't, he brought it the right way. And God said, because you listened to me and did it the right way, your sins are forgiven. Right? He was approved by God. Faith can do something great. And he was declared righteous by faith. Abel's work of faith. You know, he, he might have had a confident expectation too. Then when he brings this animal, the firstborn. I mean, I think life was very precious at the beginning, probably, don't you think? Yeah. Even the animals, and then Abel, he kills the firstborn, so that might have been tough for him, right? And he brings the fat portions, and he brings it, and I mean, it was hard on him maybe to do that, but he said, you know, God said it, I'm going to do it. And he goes and he does it, and God says, you know what, because you've done that. Now, he might not even have known about the future Messiah, or Jesus, or the blood covenant, or anything. he might not know anything, but he just did what he was told. And sometimes we just need to do what we're told. Some people need to think about this, need to reason it. they got to figure it all out. I'm like, stop it. Just do it. Be doers of the word, not hearers only. You don't have to figure it all out. Make sure you've got it all reasoned out. Like you need to have the answers. You don't. You'll never know all the answers. You're not smart enough. You're not smart enough. I'm not smart enough. But God is. So all I need to do is just obey Him. Do what He says. To watch full sermons, testimonies, and more, visit www.fafc.ca. 
Well, for the last little while, I've had a real kind of just a dullness and kind of a just a hardness in my heart. And it just kind of crept in through different circumstances. And I knew it was wrong and I wanted to get rid of it, but it just, it was just stubborn. And last Saturday night at our young adults event, I just felt like the best way I could describe it is like if God took a huge bucket of water and just threw it over me and it just washed over me and all that hardness and all that dullness and all that apathy towards God, it just left. It completely left and I just felt his life rush in me again and I just felt like I could breathe again and I could experience him again and I had just such a, it was just overwhelming, just that love for God and the love for people and what's going on and just wanting to be here and just get everything I could from, you know, and this week, this week has been just ridiculous. Circumstances in my life hasn't really changed at all, but my response to them has changed completely. And it's just been, it's just been a complete turnaround and nothing's really actually changed except what God did in my heart. And I just, I just want to say, if you feel that way or if you're struggling with that, like just let it go. Just get rid of it. You're just holding on to nothing. And God's trying to give you his kingdom, his love, his world, and just grab it and go with it because it's so good. It's, he's so good. I just, I can't get over it. Sometimes life can be a challenge. Unexpected circumstances can arise causing fear, depression, anxiety, anger, and sickness. But God doesn't want us to live with those in our lives. If you're in need of God, I encourage you to say this prayer with me. God, I ask you to come into my heart, remove anything that is not of you, and bring me peace. I give you my life, and I choose to serve you always. In Jesus' name, amen.
Wasn't that a great episode? We learned that our faith can move the hand of God, and we need faith every day to live out this life. We also learned that Abel was the first one ever to operate in faith. I want to pray right now with you. God, I pray that you give us this faith that we can live a life like Abel. God, that we have the faith that will move your hand in our situations. And I pray that you give us the obedience to live out the Word of God. Amen. Well, if you want to hear the full sermon, visit our website at fafc.ca. Thanks for watching and see you next week. Faith Alive Bible College invites you to come build an unshakable foundation for life through immersion in the Word. Get ready for a year full of purpose, daily seeking God's presence and power. Receive practical and biblical training deepening your relationship with God. Our fully accredited programs range from a one-year certificate to doctorate degree, equipping you for ministry. Learn the Jewish roots of the faith, revealing the original context and modern application of the Bible. Hands-on experience in a wide range of music, media, and mission trips will enrich your study. Study on campus or online. Don't wait. Your future in God starts here. Apply today. Jesus Was Not a Rebel is a groundbreaking book. Its contents can revolutionize your walk with the Lord. This book will show you how Jesus not only didn't rebel, He is the perfect example of submission. Jesus was not, could not, and never will be the author of rebellion. You can order a digital copy or hard copy online through Amazon or simply purchase it through your local Christian bookstore. Do you have a testimony or prayer request? Would you like to contact us? You can reach us at 306-652-2230 or by email at info at fafc.ca. Our mailing address is 637 University Drive, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, postal code S7N0H8. We look forward to hearing from you soon. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Mark 12, verse 30, 31. And the Lord will restore him to health. God will rescue, recover, and restore.